Hello, this is Andy from the Engineers Academy and in this video series we're going to be looking at worked solutions to the Unit 1 Engineering Principles exam which will be sat by students studying BTEC Level 3 Nationals in Engineering. Now the document that we're going to be referring to today are the sample assessment materials that are or have previously been provided on the Edexcel website and the document that we're going to be referring to in particular is Issue 1 of the sample assessment materials. Question 18 reads as follows. An electrical engineer is installing a system that will combine two AC voltages to provide power to a piece of equipment. The two AC voltage waveforms are represented by V1 equals 100 sine 100 omega T volts and V2 equals 200 sine 100 omega T minus pi over 6 volts. So the two voltages are out of phase. The question then reads, draw a phasor diagram to represent V1 and V2 and find the resultant phasor. Now you have the option here, if you have a ruler and a protractor, you could actually draw this to scale. But failing that, we can actually use trigonometry to solve this question, which is going to give you a more accurate result. Now the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to convert pi over 6 into degrees. And this will make things a little bit easier for us. So pi over 6 in degrees, or the way that we would convert it, we would do pi over 6 times 360, the thing we're trying to find, over 2 pi, the thing we're trying to get from. And what I mean there is there's 360 degrees in a circle. That's what we're trying to get to. And there's 2 pi radians in a circle. That's what we're trying to get from. So when I convert that, I get an angle or a phase angle in degrees of 30 degrees. So I can replace that pi over 6 with 30 degrees. Now I have two phasors. When we draw a phasor that doesn't have a phase shift, i.e. in the case of V1, we represent it by an arrow going from left to right, like so. And the length of that arrow represents the amplitude of the voltage. So here, the amplitude of the voltage is 100. To that, we're adding a second voltage. Because what the question's asking us is to find the resultant of the two added voltages. Now, when we add two vectors, what we can do is add them end on end. So what we actually have is we have a line with a length of 200 at an angle of minus 30 degrees. And the way that we would represent that is as follows. This line needs to be 200 long. And this angle here is 30 degrees. We have tutorials that explain this in a little bit more detail, but I'm assuming that you've already been through those tutorials and this is more of a recap for you. Now, in order to find the resultant, the resultant is going to be the single vector that joins our beginning to our end, like so. So we're trying to find that length there, R, which is V1 plus V2. Now, I'm just going to switch colours so that we can see what we're doing here. What we have is we have a right angle triangle. And that right angle triangle is shown in red there. Now to fully define this resultant, we need to do two things. We need to define its magnitude, which is represented by R. And we also need to define its angle, which I'm going to call Thigh. So we have two things to find. And the way that we're going to find them is through trigonometry. What we need to do is we need to work out this length here. And we need to work out this length here. And then we can use Pythagoras' theorem to find the magnitude of R. So let's continue. Now the first thing I'm going to find is the total X component. And the total x component is going to be 100, which takes us from there to there, plus whatever this length here is. And I can find that length there using trigonometry on this section of the triangle. And in fact, let's redraw that section of the triangle. We have a triangle 
with a hypotenuse of 200 and an internal angle of 30 degrees. Well, when we use trigonometry, the longest side is the hypotenuse, the side opposite the angle is the opposite, and the remaining side is the adjacent. And we have two trigonometric formula that we can use. The first one states that the opposite is hypotenuse sine theta, and the second is that the adjacent equals hypotenuse cos theta. And we're going to need the opposite. The opposite is going to be this side here on our initial diagram. And the adjacent is going to be the length of the arrow that we've just defined here. So let's calculate those now. The opposite is hypotenuse, 200, sine 30, because 30 is the angle there. And the adjacent is 200 cos 30. Now calculating those through, we get an opposite of exactly 100. And we get an adjacent of 173.2. So now we can find the total x component of our resultant. I'm going to change colours again, and I'm going to call it R subscript x for the x components of the resultant. And it's going to be 100 plus our adjacent. I know that because it's the 100 on our diagram plus the adjacent. And our adjacent is 173.2, giving us 273.2 for our total x. Now total y is more straightforward because the total y component is just the opposite on our triangle. We do need to take a little bit of care though because what we notice is that it's traveling from top to bottom or it's in the negative direction. Therefore r subscript y is going to be minus the 100. Okay, so the next step then is I'm going to redraw the triangle for R. And the triangle for R is going to appear as follows. We have an X component of 273.2. And we have a Y component of 100, but acting downwards, like so. And there's our triangle. We need to find the magnitude of the resultant, and we need to find the angle here, phi. So if we continue down with our calculations, the magnitude of r is the square root of the square of the two shorter sides. So in this case, it's the square root of 273.2 plus 100 squared giving us a magnitude equal to 290.9. Now to find our angle, we can use another trigonometric identity. And this trigonometric identity states that tan thi, which is our angle in our triangle here, tan thi is opposite over adjacent. But just note, we're not looking for tan thi. What we're looking for is just thi, which is therefore tan to the minus 1 of opposite over adjacent, the inverse tan. So we can continue. We have thi, the angle we're trying to find, equals tan to the minus 1 of opposite. Well, the opposite's 100 over adjacent, well the adjacent is 273.2, giving us an angle phi equal to 20.1 degrees. However, that angle, again referring to our diagram in the bottom left, is below the horizontal, or tilting downwards. So that represents a negative phase angle. I'm going to write one line, which is the summary for V1 plus V2. 
So the vector v1 plus v2, which is what we were looking for, if you recall from the question, and the amplitude of v1 plus v2 is our 290.9, or our resultant vector. We then have sine omega t, because the format remains the same as v1 and v2, but we have a new phase shift, or a new phase angle, of minus 20.1, minus thi. Therefore, the sum of the two voltages, v1 plus v2, is 290.9 sine omega t minus 20.1. Now, in solving this question, we've represented v1 and v2 as vectors, and we've used vector addition in order to calculate the resultant phasor. Now, the other thing that's important to make clear is what the question's asking us is to draw a phasor diagram. Now, when you see a phasor diagram, each of those vectors or each of those phasors need to originate from the same point. So typically what we would see is we would see V1, and the length of that we said was 100. We have V2 originating from the same point, the length of that was 200. And then we have our resultant V1 plus V2, which was 290.9 long. Now, when we represent this on a phasor, what we would see is we would see this turned into a parallelogram. So that line there is the same length and parallel to V1. And we would see the same for V2, where this line and this line are the same length and parallel to each other. And the resultant would be shown as connecting the starting point to the corner of this parallelogram. The line that I've just drawn there represents V1 plus V2. If we were doing this as a scale drawing, we would find that that line would be 290, or using trig, we found it to be 290.9. Now, the other things that we need to add on this phasor diagram are the angles, and we had this angle from the horizontal to V2, shown here with two lines, as 30 degrees. And I'm just going to switch colours to indicate the other angle. The other angle we know is this angle here, which was 20.1 degrees. So what we have here is a phasor diagram that accurately represents V1, V2 and V1 plus V2.